Well, this is the first bowl out of this book of Carol Rothman. Uh, this is a simple, basic round stacked bowl. That's the book. <clears throat> the pattern is in, in the book. As you can see, uh, that's the pattern from the book. As you can see, it's a little smaller than this. It says to copy it at 111%. So I did that, and then I checked it because it's supposed to be a 7-inch circle, and it checks out to be 7 inches, and each ring should be 3 eighths. And those are critical measurements, and it is 3 eighths. So I'm going to start with an 8-inch by 8-inch blank, which I have right here. Now, she was using Aspen for this first bowl. I don't have enough 3 quarter inch aspen. In fact, I have none. I have some quarter inch aspen, but not enough to layer up and make a bowl with. So, and then I, I wanted to start off with something inexpensive because this is a learning experience. I'm always learning her techniques and lining them up and cutting them. And uh, I have discovered making bowls. If you're off a little bit on the angle, you can mess up real quick. So I'm going to do this with just some basic construction pine, actually. Uh, if I can make it line up with that and make a, a decent looking bowl, then I'll get some aspen or some poplar. I'll probably use a lot of poplar. I can buy that locally. Anything else I have to order. Now, some of her more exotic bowls, I'll have to get some mahogany and yellow heart, purple hearts, different things to make the designs on the side of the bowl. But I'm not anywhere near that yet. She has an alternative to this bowl, which is... Uh, a little larger circle and, and a little different angle with a half inch instead of three quarter inch, but she used zebra wood. Well, for me, zebra wood, enough zebra wood to build that bowl would be 30 some dollars, ship, not counting shipping. So I'm not saying I can't afford that. I'm just not going to do that as an experiment or a test. I'll probably do that with Poplar in my second video. But right now, I'm going to uh, go through her procedures. That's the whole purpose of this. She has some different procedures I've never used in making a bowl. I just cook, uh, flew by the seat of my pants and slapped a pattern on and cut it out. I made some decent little bowls doing that. But she has this, you see how I've got this lined out right here? You go, it makes this line up. And then you mark each layer as you go. So you make sure you keep... Uh, keep the, the rings lined up. And the reason for that is if you keep the grain of the wood looking, it looks like it comes out of one solid piece of wood. Plus, later on when you get to doing designs with different woods, you got to keep them lined up. So I'm going to start out. That's not absolutely necessary because I didn't do this before and I made some okay bowls. But uh, this could make it much better and much easier to line up. So let me mount this pattern and uh, We'll go to town on that. Now first, I'm going to put some tape on that. I just put those lines on it, and I'll draw the lines, redraw the lines on the tape to line it up with. But I just wanted to start out with this to explain what I'm doing, what the material is I'm using. And uh, this is a simple bowl, and I'm going to use her techniques. So let me get it set up, and we'll make the first cut. Okay, so I've got the tape. On the on the uh, blank, I drew the lines. You can barely see them out the ends. Now she said to put an all through there and line it up on the uh, center of that with that adhesive on there. It's very difficult to do for me, so I just lined it up carefully. Got the uh, lines lined up with the that on the tape, and I think it came out just about not perfect, but it came out really well. So now we're gonna go to the next step which we got to set our saw to the right angle and cut the outside. I do believe that's the next step. Um, yeah, I got to set my saw to 28 degrees. I'm going I got to put a new blade in. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to see what I got. It'll be the number seven, uh, of one brand, Pegasus brand, or a number nine of a Flying Dutchman. I might not have a seven Pegasus, but I'll have to go there and see. I'll get the saw mount uh, set up for that. Then we'll move it over there and we'll cut the first outline. That's the first step. So I've got me a number nine Flying Dutchman in there. Looks like I got to order me some blades. I like the Pegasus blade better, but this is what I've got for right now. Uh, she likes a larger blade, so you keep the cut true up and down. 
This is what's critical. I got it set at 28 degrees. Kind of hard to do it where the saw is right now, but 28 degrees. I probably can't see that, but I just, it looks, still looks good to me. And you got to make sure you're going to cut counterclockwise. You're going to, going to spin. You're going to, the blade's going to go clockwise around this, and you're going to spin this counterclockwise. So because we got the left side down, we need the top of it to be well wider than the bottom. So I'm gonna cut this outside real carefully. That makes gives us the blank. And then we'll then we'll take the next steps. And I'll I'll double check that angle with some other uh, tools there when I get it off to see how close I am or if I need to readjust. So anyway, here we go, we're gonna cut it. Well, got the outline cut out. We've got the bowl blank set up. So, and I've got this angle here on this that I'm going to use as my uh, guide block to drill these holes, and they, they match perfectly. Uh, regardless if that's if they're actually 28 degrees, they, they they appear to be on everything I measure them with. So I think we're in good shape. I did waver a little bit up in here at the very last, but that's what sanding is about. And you kind of smooth all that out. Uh, it's very critical to cut these as accurately as you can, uh, so because then you got to match them up and, with the other uh, rings, and you're not cutting them at the same time. So any discrepancies leave you some area to sand. But well, you're going to have that, I'm pretty sure anyway. So let me get my drill set up and <clears throat> get me another block here so I can drill these entry holes. You know, drill them at this angle. I'm going to use this little block. Just going to use a handheld drill. I could put it on the uh, on the uh, drill press and set my angle on the drill press, but uh, I'm going to use this for this time and see how this works because that's how she was showing to do it. So we got that got that cut out. Uh, you want to mark your mark on the on the top of the bowl here. Uh, so you know, uh, uh, keep points so you can keep the rings oriented. Uh, that's what she's showing. You put a you, you mark right here in line with that line. And I was going to use that in the future, I do believe. I'm not 100% sure how, but uh, let me get my pencil. I'll mark that and I'll get my drill set up and I'll get ready to drill these entry holes. Okay, I've got me a set up here to drill this. Using this big drill, it's kind of uh, tedious to use with a small bit like this. But I got me a setup here so I can set everything up. I don't really need that on the inner ring, but and the drill bit's a little short. I just have to get it started and then go back and, and pull the thing out of the way and the guide out of the way and finish it. Anyway, that's drilling the holes. Let me finish these other two. I've got this here because you get to this outer ring, you need, need some support. I'm going to drill these other two, and we'll see about cutting the next ring, see what she has to say about that. But let me finish cutting, uh, drilling these, and then we'll look at the next step. Well, I've got all the entry holes drilled. Uh, when I put this through, it looked like it was a little bit off on the angle, the blade trying to come out before I hooked it up. 
So there'll be some sanding to do. If, you know, hopefully it's not too far off. I can't sand it and make it a, a smooth surface on the outside. That this is a learning experience process. So, and we're going to cut this ring off, and we've got to take it off and set it up here and do some marking on it. I got that ring cut off. That's the first ring. And actually it's, it's doing really well. Uh, as far as the angles on the outside, it's matching up real nicely. That's the best I've had one do in the several bowls I've made. Uh, it's not perfect. The biggest problem with this is that, uh, like I said, that drill hole was a little bit off. You can see right there, the, the drill, the, the uh, blade was a little bit out of line until it cut into the spot. That's okay to sand off, but it's going to leave a, a low spot here we're going to have to work on. But this is, a, this is a practice piece as much as anything. And so what you're supposed to do next, I've already got this marked on the outside all the way around. You're supposed to do the same thing right here. Sit this on here and mark that right there. Actually marks both top and bottom. So I'm going to go around and do that. And we'll look at the next step. So I got it all cut out, got all the rings cut out, and uh, use those, as you draw those lines, and use them to line it up. Now, actually, if you have a good good grain pattern in there, that helps you also, because that's the purpose of keeping it lined up. You see how that grain all swirls together. I like that effect, and that's what the purpose of this is. And you see how it swirls around all, all together, and it lines up pretty nicely. So what I got to do now, I want to sand all these top marks off of everything, uh, off of each uh, each ring, 
and then I got to stack them together and see if there's any uh, gaps in them that I need to sand out and then I'll glue them so I'll be doing some sanding and uh, that's not going to be real hard sanding because it's a soft wood but that's the next step uh, lined it up I will say that the external part of the bowl actually lines up better when you get it right than any bowl I've ever cut on the first try also then in it both of them the angle worked perfectly almost I'm really pleased with that part of it the only thing I really messed up was drilling those holes they were slightly off which caused a problem that blade had to work its way into the line and left a left a raised area right there and then on the opposite side it, it cut into it as it cut it got cut to the line where it needed to go and it's a little bit out of line uh, I may try a different uh, technique next time I might use my drill press if I can get it set up properly and I'll practice with that and uh, but this is a practice bowl so that's what I'm learning what I what I need to do to improve to make this work smoothly and it's cheap soft wood so it's not a big deal doesn't take long to cut it so I'm gonna do some sanding and I will try out my new bowl press that I just made and start gluing this up and see and then the big part of this is the sanding that's where you really get your finished product now this cutting is important and the way you do it is important but ultimately the way you sand it and shape it is how you form your bowl so uh, let me get to doing some sanding I just just sand off these pencil marks on these top rings and before I glue them together I'm not gonna worry about the inside we've got to glue those though we've got to sand that whole thing anyway so I'm not going to worry about sanding those, but I'm going to sand these like on the top. Then I'm going to stack it make sure there are no gaps in between them and sand them out if there are. Well, I uh, got all these marks sanded off the surfaces of all the pieces. I made sure that there were no gaps. I didn't have any trouble at the top one. I had to sand a little bit, get rid of a little bit of gap between these two layers. It wasn't much. It all fit pretty nicely. Uh, the outside and inside are lining up nicely. Uh, I did sand those large pieces out while it was uh, they were separate. So now I'm going to glue these four rings together without the base. And I've got some wax paper on my little press that I made. I got something to go on top of it. That's what she says to do. So I'm going to just very slowly and carefully line these up with a little glue. There'll be three spots to put glue on. And then I'm going to put it in the press and pull it down for five or ten minutes and let that glue set a little bit. And then take it out and wipe off any glue squeeze out. And then put it back in and clamp it down for a little while. But right now I'm going to get the glue. And I'm going to carefully glue these together and try to keep them lined up.
So I got a little carried away and jumped a step. Uh, after gluing the rings together, uh, sand the internal inside, I did that. I used a, a sander like this on the drill press. I had a, this is the medium one. There's three sizes. I used the larger one. It's still over there. Got different grits on that. And then a little bit of hand sanding too. But then I got my little flexible pad sander out. I wanted to try that out and I got started so I sanded the outside of the bowl and I should have glued the bottom on. The next step was to glue the bottom on before you did this. But as you can see these marks here, I kind of knew that was fatal when I made that first cut, which was between these two rings. You can see it marked this ring, but not that ring, which means I was off on the angle at the bottom. I knew that was probably going to be too deep for me to repair. I could, but it'll be very thin. So, but I wanted to proceed on with this, uh, with her instructions. It's just a practice bowl. It's just pine. There's not any high dollar material. And this is a learning project. So I wanted to go through with her procedures and follow them to, to practice them through even with this bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it and continue on. Next I got to glue the bottom on. It's the same procedures I use gluing these rings on so I'm not going to film it. Uh, then I'll get that flexible pad sander a hold of it. Now she said on these side, straight sided bowls you could use a, a belt sander. And I have a belt sander, but I don't have one grit on it. I sanded my other little smaller bowls on it. And that works really well. But this was sanded with a flexible pad sander. And I went through three grits to get to this point. And I'm very pleased with it. It works very well. So I'm going to glue the bottom on. And I'll get over and see if I can film a little bit of the sanding when I start gluing the, the sanding the bottom. So let me get to that point. And I'll see if I can sit up and film over there here in just a little bit. I'm going to try to film sanding this bottom ring. Uh, I've got my flex pad sander on there. I've got P60, I think that's a 60 grit. To start out, I'm just going to have to get this even right here and smooth it off. And then I'm going to kind of round the bottom just a little bit. So hopefully I'm picking this up. It looks good from here, but I don't know how it's going to look actually when I get done. I don't have much room to set up a camera over here in this corner. I do have good light from the from the uh, window, it's really nice in the afternoon. The sun comes through here, you can shine across there and see where you're uneven. Anyway, here we go. I'm gonna try to sand this. That's mineral spirits. I'm just trying to see if there's any glue showing. I'll put this on and look for glue. If I see any more, mark it with a pencil. Go back and try to sand it, otherwise, remove it. 
and then we'll see about putting a finish on it. Everything looks good so far. we're good I'll let that dry I think I'm going to use some tongue oil on it I've got tongue oil and Danish oil and even some cutting board oil but I'm just going to uh, put some tongue oil on it I believe I've got it handy I'll let that dry a little while and I'll come back and do that uh, what we're going to do with this bowl we have a have some of my stuff on consignment down at a little consignment shop and I got some little small items that I cut and my wife said, well, we could use this to, to put them in. Anyway, that's the plan right now. I'll make some use of it. And I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to uh, uh, probably try to drill those holes with the uh, drill press. Because uh, either by my eye or the way my hand worked, I didn't drill those holes straight. So I'm going to try to go back to machine to do it. Uh, that's one of the suggestions she had. So... Uh, I'll be back in a little bit, and we'll put some finish on it. We'll call this finished, but then I don't know if I'll get it, get the second iteration done in time to add to this video, but if I get it done properly, I'll, I'll link from the, this video to the next one to show you how I, if I did any better or not on the, on the drilling. I'm going to call this bowl finished. This was... It's to be a practice bowl to walk through this, this procedure she uses to make the bowls. Uh, it's not, I wasn't looking for a slick finish bowl. It's a light wood. It's, it's easy to gouge sanding. Uh, I like the way it turned out considering what it is. I just messed up on drilling those holes. And in mentioning that, I have started it again. I took it to the... Uh, drill press and even then you have to be really careful to get everything lined out. I got the angle correct. As you can see, I believe you can see, there it is. Those those came out about right. Now one of my problems is I'm using a number nine blade, I mean a number seven, because I didn't have a Pegas. I'm sorry, it's a number nine. It is a number nine. It's a Flying Dutchman number nine, which is a relatively large blade. And uh, I've got some Pegas blades coming in. She said a seven and a Pegas would, would work, and that's what I'm going to try to use in the future when it comes in. But I can drill a little smaller hole, which will help with that. And I didn't have this issue with the other bowls that I made, because I didn't drill holes. I just cut, line the pattern up where you cut with the grain across, uh, across the... Uh, Put it back together, supposedly grain will hide it. It does to some extent, but it still will show a line out here that I didn't really like. And uh, Carol Rothman didn't like that either. That's what she said. She preferred to drill these holes and not get that cross cut. Well, actually, you cut with the grain. But anyway, I'm going to finish this one too. I got one. This one right here, I uh, didn't get quite center. I think it's going to be... Inside on the inside of that ring. I'm gonna have a little groove I may be able to sand it out but again. It's just another practice bowl because I'm using the same material It's just some uh, cheap pine and uh, I'm gonna I'll do a little follow-up video on that yeah, I want to do a quick follow-up on this uh, bowl I was about just started editing this video and I finished working on this uh, this one that I was showing where I was trying to drill on the drill press. And that was 75% uh, successful. Um, still got the, the original one. Still got the marks on it. Uh, this, like I say, I'm going to use that as a display to hold some stuff at my uh, consignment shop. I'll probably do the same thing with this one. But you can see there are no marks on the outside of this bowl from the drill. Now, I had one, if you remember, that I didn't drill exactly on the line. 
That one still shows, if I can find it, on the inside. It's not real visible, but I wasn't able to sand that all the way out. I was getting real thin over here, so I thinned the top up a little bit to kind of match it. I'm not really looking for a fine finished product here. This is a learning experience, a learning project. Uh, I really like, uh, I'm getting better at the sanding, I believe. This is still really not completely sanded bowl. It's got some fine scratches I need to get out of it. But it's matching up really nicely. That part of it I'm real pleased with. And uh, I'll get uh, a little better on, I think I, I used an awl to start the hole at that point. I think I was off just a little bit. And it's enough to make that drill bit go off in this ring. Uh, if you look at this string, right, this drill right here would match up here. And there you see no marks up here. So, and those two rings come, come from apart, so the outside of this ring would match the inside of this ring. And it didn't leave a mark there at all. But, that was because I got off of the mark a little bit. And I'm going to start using a smaller blade and drill a little bit smaller hole. And as I move forward, that's going to be less of a problem as I'm learning how to uh, uh, do things properly. But anyway, that's, gonna, that's a nice little bowl. Uh, nothing fancy, it's just pine, but I'm going to make use of it to uh, store and display some small items. So I'm, I'm probably going to put some sort of finish on it, but I just wanted to, before I posted out this video, I wanted to show how that worked with the drill press drilling the holes. It worked great, except for that one I got off, and that was my mistake. That's the beginning of my little bowl making series, and we'll be learning how to make a... a a really well made bowl. I've made some okay ones, but they haven't been really, really great. I want to get to where I make a really nice bowl. I think this is a good first step in learning the procedure. Uh, so if you like that, hit the like button. And if you want to see the rest of these bowl making series, I'll have them in a playlist when I get them all done. Uh, subscribe so you can get to that and know when I put the next ones up. So I'm going to call this one good for, for this. And, uh, so thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.